All right, we, we have a lovely guest for you guys. Uh, his name is uh, John Farmer. He is a senior counsel for the 9-11 Commission, or he was, and he's the author of The Ground Truth, The Untold Story of America Under Attack on 9-11. John, welcome to the Young Turks. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, we appreciate you coming on. So, uh, <laughs> most obvious question in the whole wide world, what is the untold story of 9-11? <laughs> well, what, what I do in the book is... is um, as a result of documents, primary source documents that have been declassified uh, since we uh, issued the 9-11 Commission Report, to which we had access, but we couldn't get them declassified at the time, I'm able to tell the story of 9-11 that was, as it was actually lived by the people in the government who were charged with uh, responding to and, and countering the threat posed by Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. So I'm able to tell the story in units of time in terms of years, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, and ultimately seconds that the relevant government f officials were trying to counter the threat. Okay. And what, what do we mainly learn? Like, what do, we, what do I not know about 9-11 that uh, you found out? Well, I think telling the story that way is the best window into uh, how crisis decision-making uh, actually happens. Not the way it's drawn up in a government organization chart, uh, but the way it actually happens. And until my, my thesis is that until we appreciate... Uh, how these decisions actually get made in the real world, we're not going to be prepared for the next big crisis to come. And I, I do a, co a comparison and contrast with Katrina, which happened a few years later, which was not a surprise attack and which was something that we had been preparing for for decades. And you had the same dynamic where the critical decisions had to be made by people much lower than the top officials because they simply weren't there. And but because of the way the government was structured, they felt inhibited in doing that and ultimately had to improvise our response. So uh, I think that's what you should come away from the book with an understanding of. We really need to reconfigure our government so that the appropriate people in a crisis are making the critical decisions. But how do we do that, John? Because let's take the example of 9-11. United 93 is up there. Uh, we didn't get to it for a long, long time. Um, and, you, of course, you know a lot better than I do as to... Did we ever get to United 93? Were we ever locked in position? If, if no. <clears throat> Bottom line is, and this is contrary to what the public had been told, um, the public had been basically assured that by the time of the last flight, uh, the National Command Structure had had responded to the shock of the, the initial attacks and was uh, really lined up and ready to intercept that flight if it had to, uh, but for the passengers acting heroically and, and causing the hijackers to crash the plane. Um, but the reality of the day was that um, the military was not made aware of a problem on ni United 93 until four minutes after the plane had crashed. And the authorization to intercept the plane uh, didn't come from the national command structure, from the president and vice president, until a half an hour after that. No, but uh, John, so that's my question, because that's the perfect setup for it. Uh, you know, you can't, how do you have someone at the lower level make a decision to shoot down a plane? You can't do that. It's got to go up to the president, and is, or in that case, it went up to the vice president. But how, how, how can you do that quick enough? This seems well, to be a problem. Well, that's one of the things actually that's changed since 9-11 is that the authorization to intercept can be given at a lower level of command. They've actually recognized the, the reality that you know, you're simply not going to have time uh, in a scenario like that to, to have the, the authorization go all the way up the chain of command uh, and then all the way back down and authenticate the order and then carry it out. You're simply not going to have the, the, the time to do that. A good analogy is, is like in Israel where if there's a suicide bomber, the, um, uh, the first responder who's on the scene doesn't have to go all the way up you know, to the uh, chain of command in the Army to take action because you simply experience has taught them that you don't have time to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the lesson we have to learn from, from events like that. So how do you structurally, bureaucratically, empower people at, on the on the lower levels of the of the government bureaucracy for lack of a better word well i think it's a it's a process of thinking through um, different types different scenarios of of cat catastrophe and in light of uh, what you know about how these things are experienced in light of 911 and in light of uh, katrina uh, realizing at what level these decisions are going to have to be made just to give you another example from 911 the decision to ground all the flights uh, in the sky that morning was not made by Secretary of Transportation or anybody um, at his level, it was actually made by uh, the, um, uh, the command center, FAA command center in Herndon and sort of acting on their own because they realized we have to do something. Well, I think you have to acknowledge that in the future, with those kinds of events, it's at that level the decisions are going to have to be made. And so I think what you can do, and, and I have some experience 
uh, handling emergencies in New Jersey. I was the attorney general and, and in charge of emergency management. What I ended up doing in things like Hurricane Floyd was <clears throat> essentially ratifying decisions that were made lower down the chain uh, because by the time it got to me, uh, if they had waited, uh, we would have we would we would have been out of time. So I think it's a different way of looking at it, uh, and that's the, the sort of lesson that emerges from 9/11. All right, we're talking to John Farmer. He wrote the book The Ground Truth: The Untold Story of America Under Attack on 9/11. He was also the senior counsel for the 9/11 Commission. John, we've had uh, Jesse Ventura on the program, and he's a little skeptical about your commission, and he says uh, that uh, these look like. Uh, you know, controlled demolitions, right? Now, I'm sure it's not the first time you've heard that. Uh, you know what? Let me ask you a very specific question on that. Yep. WTC7, that's the one that always makes me go, well, okay, they seem to have a decent point there. Why the hell did that building go down? So uh, can you tell us about that, straighten it out? Yeah, with the caveat that I'm not an engineer, <laughs> I, will, uh, I will tell you with respect to WTC7, uh, there was an enormous amount of fuel stored in that building. Um, and in fact, it was the, it was fuel that was supposed to power the uh, New York City's Emergency Operations Center, which was also located on, in that building. And I think that 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 fuel ignited, and that really what caused that building to come down. Um, I'm you know I've read the reports, I've, but the National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, has looked at the engineering aspects of this thing, and the uh, National Geographic has commissioned a panel of engineers to look at it, um, and neither one of those. Uh, entities conclude there was anything to the sort of crazy or conspiracy theories that you know somehow there were there were explosives planted in the buildings that caused them to come down. And think about that for a minute. Think about the the scope of the conspiracy that would be involved to pull something like that off. It just it just defies common sense. No, no, I I agree with you. Jesse Ventura thinks that you could do it with about fifteen special ops guys, but. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to leave that to an argument between you and Jesse one day. But, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but you know, I didn't know that there was a lot of ex uh, explosives uh, or fuel in uh, WC7, so that yep. goes towards uh, a long way towards explaining that. So now I have a, a second question, which is, do you think the Bush administration did enough to prepare before 9-11, especially given that they were given memos of some of bin Laden determined to attack inside the United States? It seems well, like you know, that's, it's, that's, that's a, it's a tough question to answer. I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, and they're, they're certainly, um, you know, they they did not have the level of uh, alarm about the issue that the Clinton administration did, simply because they hadn't been dealing with it for eight years the way the Clinton administration had. I think my own this is my own opinion, but I think the partisan lens is the wrong one to look through uh, to assign um, uh, culpability for this, because I think, uh, and one of the the, the the truths that emerged from the book is. That really throughout the 90s, um, government had been trying to reorient itself to deal with this emerging threat. Uh, we see it in the agencies like the CIA, where Tenet declared war on Al Qaeda in 1998. The, F the FBI, where Louis Free tried to get the Bureau to change its culture to, to anticipate terrorist attacks instead of just solving crimes after they're committed, uh, actually to move toward interdiction, which is sort of where they've come now. Uh, and, and it's really kind of a compelling human story of these these uh, people trying to change the direction of government but meeting incredible inertia in the bureaucratic state. Uh, and that really carried through. And I think the chaos that resulted on 9-11 is a microcosm and, and a very concentrated period of time of that frustration that, that existed throughout the 1990s. All right. Now, in the brief time that we have left, let me ask you one more question then. Do you think that if they had understood the urgency of the situation that if they had listened to somebody like Richard Clark who was left over from the Clinton administration but was in the Bush administration yeah uh, that there was any ch that they could have prevented it do you think it's possible or do you think they would uh, it probably would have happened under any and all circumstances well you know it's interesting because Richard Clark himself has said that you know he doubts um, that that it really could have been stopped by by that spring and summer because the the hijackers it, the hijackers have essentially run the gauntlet of our early warning system, which we've spent trillions of dollars on, you know, uh, the NSA and the, uh, all the military bases around the world, the CIA's global operations. Um, and as the conspiracy expanded, <clears throat> they basically ran the gauntlet of all these agencies that were incredibly well-funded so that by the time of the summer of 2001, uh, they were really just dealing with the FAA and NORAD as the, as the backstops. And... Those were relative backwater agencies in the whole in the grand scheme of things. So, uh, you know, Richard Clark himself, I think, has said that he doubts it could have been stopped, and I, I I think I share that view. If the 
you know, if the if the barriers to information sharing hadn't been so high, perhaps um, uh, clues would have would have been shared. Um, if they had found, you know, Hosmi and Midhar earlier, that might have caused them to call the whole thing off. But you know, at that point, and we're just speculating. Yeah, you know, and uh, look, from my point of view, it might have been nice if they tried. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you know, that's that's part of the story. They were trying. Uh, but they were up against, you know, barriers that were, uh, to a large extent, created by some by of the human people. Beings. Some of the people in the government were trying, but yeah. at, the, at the higher levels, unfortunately, it didn't put a lot of umption into it. Um, but okay, the book is called "The Ground Truth: The Untold Story of America Under Attack on 9/11." The book uh, and the author is John Farmer. John, thank you so much for joining us on the Young Turks. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.